Hi, Chad Heinling, First Somatic. Today we're gonna to show you how to install an airing kit to our E4 metallic clamp pump. Out front we have examples of our airing kit and our wetting kit for our E4 metallic clamp pump. The rebuild you're going to see is accurate in man, method, and machine, but for video purposes, some parts of the work performed have been condensed in time. At any point during the presentation, please pause this video until you have completed any part of the process. The pump we are using in this presentation has been built new and is considerably easier to work with than a pump that has been used in a process. Additional time may be required in the preparation and separation of parts and components during the rebuild. Identifying which kit is required for your repair has become easier on newer pumps with the permanently affixed metal serial number tag that now indicates the wet end and airing kit information for the pump. Kit information can also be found in the service and operating manual. Versamatic Genuine Replacement Parts Wet End and Airing Kits provide a bill of material of the components included in the kit. All items included in the kits are components that Versamatic recommends replacing when rebuilding a pump. The pump we are using today is an example of the ease of kit installation. Always consult your respective service and operating manual before performing any maintenance on your pump. Service and operating manuals include composite repair parts drawings, repair parts list, and torque specifications. For service and operating manuals or more information, visit us on the web at www.versomatic.com. Always remember that safety is the highest priority. When working on or around any equipment, always follow the correct safety procedures. Always read and follow the safety warnings and instructions in the service manual before any work is started on the pump. For more information, see the Warren Rupp video on safety at versamatic.com. Today our airside rebuild will include pilot valve spacers, o-rings, and gaskets. These are the recommended tools used with the rebuild. While the sizes may change based on the model, the type will remain the same. Torque wrench, ratchet, small slotted screwdriver, o-ring pick, snap ring pliers, 12 inch pry bars, sockets and or wrenches, 9 16 inch, 11 16 inch, 1 and 5 16 inch 6 point socket, 5 30 seconds inch socket head allen wrench. Let's get started. Today we're going to use a 3 inch drive impact gun for ease of assembly and disassembly. First let's start off by removing the discharge manifold. Remove the discharge manifold and set aside for later reassembly. Remove the valve seats and check balls. Now we're going to remove our main air valve assembly. Once you remove the main air valve assembly, go ahead and set aside for later rebuild. Now remove the suction manifold. Go ahead and set the center section of the pump aside and remove the check balls and valve seats. Now remove one clamp band assembly to remove the outer chamber. Set one outer chamber aside, remove the clamp assemblies, and remove the opposite outer chamber so we can remove both diaphragm assemblies. You may get one diaphragm assembly and one diaphragm assembly to the rod. Go ahead and set aside for later rebuild. Now remove the main shaft o-ring and discard. Repeat this process for the opposite side. Now we're ready to remove our pilot assembly. First by starting off removing the, the valve retainer screws. Go ahead and repeat this process for the second side. Once you get the valve retainer screws removed, now we're ready to remove the half inch nylock nut for the pilot spool assembly. Go 
go ahead and remove the nylock from one end. And remove the valve retainer plate from one side and reinstall the half inch nylock loosely onto one end. This way you can pull the whole pilot assembly all the way through the center block of the pump, keeping all the O-rings and spacers intact on the pilot spool. Now we're ready to install our airing kit. First off, we're going to install our main shaft O-rings. Apply a little grease to the main shaft bushing. Pinch the O-ring and work it into the main shaft groove. Fully seat the main shaft O-ring into that groove and then repeat this process for the opposite side. Be sure to apply light grease to the main shaft O-ring for lubrication and we don't damage or nick when installing the main shaft. Inspect the pilot spool for any scarring, scratching, or any sharp edges and replace as needed. We're going to go ahead and reinstall one nylock nut onto one end loosely. Slide our pilot valve retainer all the way to one end. Then begin the stack up of the brass spacer. And then just repeat the process of O ring spacer until completion. Apply light lubricant to the pilot bore of the center block help ensure that we don't roll, nick, or damage any of the O-rings. Apply light grease to all the O-rings on the pilot spool assembly so we don't nick them upon reassembly and for lubrication. Go ahead and install the pilot spool assembly with the valve retainer on one end. Now we're ready to tighten our valve retainer plate to our center block of the pump on one side. Now we're going to remove the loosely fitted nylock nut to install our opposite valve retainer plate. Once you have both valve retainer plates in place and tightened, now we're ready to tighten down our half inch nylock nut for the pilot spool assembly. Be sure to fully tighten the pilot nylock nuts all the way down to pilot spool. Go ahead and shift the pilot spool, make sure it shifts freely within the center block. Now apply light grease to the main shaft to ensure we don't damage the main shaft O-ring upon reassembly. Now install our opposite diaphragm assembly, again with natural bulge in. Make sure the inner and outer plates radius are facing towards the diaphragm. Now we're ready to torque our diaphragm assemblies to the main shaft by holding one side and torquing the opposite side. Be sure to torque the diaphragm assemblies to the recommended torque specification listed in the service manual. Now inspect our outer chambers. Inspect the radius that the diaphragm rolls across for any sharp edges. You can address those sharp edges with a light sandpaper, crocus cloth, emery cloth, or replace as needed. We're going to inspect the integrity of the casting. Inspect the machine surfaces on the suction side and discharge side and inspect the ball guides for any sharp edges and address as needed. Note the orientation of the outer chamber. The discharge side aligns with 
the main air valve assembly. Now we're ready to install our clamp band assembly, clamping our outer chamber and inner chamber together. When installing the clamp bands, go ahead and push on, but you may need a rubber mallet to tap on to fully seat the clamp band. Once you get the clamp band assembly fully seated, go ahead and install the bolts. Loosely tighten the clamp bands as we still need to realign the outer chambers before putting on the manifolds. Again, we want to inspect our opposite outer chamber radius that the diaphragm rolls across for any sharp edges and address as needed with a light sandpaper, crocus cloth, or emery cloth. Inspect the integrity of the casting, the machine surfaces, and also note the orientation of the outer chamber in relation to the center block of the pump. The discharge will go towards the main air valve assembly. Now we're going to install our opposite clamp band. Again, you may need a rubber mallet to tap on the clamp band assembly. Be sure to fully seat the, the clamp band assembly. Once you fully seat the clamp band assembly, go ahead and install the bolts. Once you get both clamps installed loosely, you may need to align the outer chambers in relation to the center of the pump. When you tighten the clamp band assemblies, there is no torque spec, but tighten them evenly. Now we're ready to install our suction manifold. Inspect the integrity of the casting. Now we're ready to install our valve seat and check ball. We have the O-ring that's built into the check valve. We have part numbers in the flat surface on the opposite side. The flat surface will go towards the check ball and the O-ring faces down. Repeat this process for the opposite valve seat. Now install our center section over top of the suction manifold. Begin to install our clamp band assemblies. Be sure to fully seat the clamp band assembly around the outer chamber and suction manifold. Again, there's no torque spec for the clamp bands themselves, but to tighten them evenly. Now we're ready to disassemble and rebuild our main air valve assembly. First by removing the end caps. Go ahead and discard our end cap gasket and repeat this process for the opposite side. Now remove the main air valve spool. And remove the old glide ring assemblies from the main air valve spool and discard. You'll have the glide ring and then underneath you'll have the O-ring that also needs to be removed and discarded. Inspect the main air valve spool for any scarring, scratching, or damage and replace as needed. Inspect the main air valve body, brass sleeve for any scarring, scratching, or damage. Now install our glide ring assemblies by first installing the O-ring once you get all the O-rings installed, you can install the glide ring over top of the O-ring. Apply a light grease to the main air valve spool assembly. Apply a light grease to the main air valve sleeve. When reinstalling the main air valve spool, go ahead and compress the glide rings. When installing the end cap gasket, be sure to align all bolt holes and pilot port hole.
tighten the end cap to the manner of our body. You'll want to repeat this process for the opposite side. Now ready to install our main air valve assembly to the center block of the pump. Be sure to align all the bolt holes of the main air valve gasket with the main air valve body and the pilot porting holes. Note the orientation of the main air valve assembly in relation to the center section of the pump. Tighten the main air valve assembly to the center block of the pump. Now we're ready to install our discharge valve seats and check balls. Note the orientation of the valve seat. The O-ring of the check valve seat will face down and the flat surface of the check valve seat will go towards the ball. Inspect the integrity of the casting of our discharge manifold. Inspect the machine surfaces and the ball guides for any sharp edges and address those sharp edges if need be with a light sandpaper or crocus cloth or emery cloth. If too far gone or worn, replace as needed. Now install our clamp band assemblies over top of the outer chamber flange and discharge flange. Again, there's no torque spec for the clamp band assembly, but to tighten evenly. That completes our air side rebuild. When doing a complete rebuild, see our wet side video. Or for additional information, find us on the web at versamatic.com or contact after sales support at service.versamatic at idexcorp.com. Thank you.